These slides were organized by Dr. Alemi and describe 2K control chart. The idea of these charts is based on 2K's work and was first proposed by Alemi. Making a 2K chart is relatively easy. It can be done in seven steps. It starts with checking assumptions. 2K charts assume there are one observation per time period. 2K charts are based on median distribution and are not affected by outliers as much as the X-bar control chart or other averaging control charts like XMR or moving range charts are affected. In step 2, we calculate the medians and fourths. You are familiar with the median, a value where half the data are below and half the data are above it. To calculate the median, we have to uh, order the data first. Select median where data are in two halves. If odd number of observation, take the data point in the middle, where 50% of the data are below it and 50% above it. If even number of observations, take average of two middle ranked numbers. If median is one of the data points, include it in both the upper and lower half of the data. Excel has a function called median that calculates the median of data. A lower fourth is similar to median, but 25% of data fall below it. It's in essence a quartile. A quartile is the median of the first half of the data. At this point, 25% of the data are below this value. An upper fourth is similar concept. It is 75% quartile, and it is the median of the upper half of the data. At this point, 75% of the data are below it. Step 3 calculates fourth spread. The difference between upper and lower fourths is referred to as fourth spread. Step 4 calculates control limits. We will use 2K's suggested limits for calculation of confidence intervals. The procedure calculates control limits from difference calculated of fourths and fourth spreads. The upper control limit is calculated as the sum of the upper fourths and 1.5 times the fourth spread. The lower control limit is calculated as the difference of the lower fourth and, one and minus 1.5 times the fourth spread. Next, we plot observations and control limit. In interpret our findings and distribute the control charts and our interpretation of it. Let us look at an example. Jane collected data in this table regarding her exercise time. She planned to exercise three times a week and each time she exercised, she recorded the time in minutes. When she did not exercise, she recorded a zero for the length of exercise. The first seven days recorded were pre-intervention. After this period, she and her spouse joined a mixed group volleyball team. The question she wanted to know was whether joining the team had made a difference in her exercise time. The first step is to sort pre-intervention data in order of length of exercise. This is shown in this table, in the last column of the table. Next, we calculate the median. This is the value where half the data, 7 times 0.5 equals 3.5, or 3 points, are below it, and half the data, or 3 points, are above it. The fourth data point with value of 30 is the median. 3 data points are below it, and 3 above it. Since median is an actual data point, we include this point in the lower data set to calculate the lower fourth. We calculate the halfway point of the, for the first half of the data. When we include the median, we have four points in the lower data set. The 25% quartile is halfway between the second and third point. In other words, between 25 and 30, which is 27 and a half. To calculate the upper fourth, we calculate the halfway point for the upper half of the data. Again, because the median is an actual data point, we include this point in the upper data set. With the median, 
we have four data points from median to the highest value. The upper fourth is between fifth and sixth data points, between 35 and 40, and therefore its value is 37 and a half. The fourth spread is the difference between the upper and the lower fourth, which is 37 and a half minus 27 and a half, or 10 points. The upper control limit is calculated as 37 and a half plus 1 and a half times 10, the fourth spread. So we calculate it as 52 and a half. The lower control limit is calculated as 27 and a half minus one and a half times the fourth spread, which gives us 12.5. Examination of the control chart shows that in the first seven days, there was one very low point of no exercise, a statistical abnormality. After the first seven days used for setting the limits on three occasions, the total exercise time exceeded the upper control limit. In these three days, there was a real increase in exercise time compared to the first seven days. If these days correspond to joining the volleyball team, then the intervention seems to have worked. Let us look at another example. Suppose that we are looking at 12 months data regarding our clinic's budget. The question is whether the expenditures in any particular month are higher than the general pattern across the 12 months. There is no pre- or post-intervention period here. The table shows the budget deviations, expenditures minus budget amount, for each of the months in thousands of dollars. First, we sort the data. Notice how the range, how the rank order of the observation changes. There are 12 points, so the median is halfway between the 6th and 7th ranked data points. Therefore, the median is not included in the lower and upper data set because it's not an actual value in the data. The fourth spread is 29. Now we can calculate the upper and lower control limits. The chart shows that all months are within control limits except for March where there was a significant deviation from the budgeted amount. We have to look at, see what was the cause of this significant deviation. 2K control chart works with medians and is not sensitive to outliers as mean-based charts are. 